as you know, I bonds are one of our favorite investments. But now, with the new rates as of November 1st being down almost 3% compared to the past, is it too late to invest in them? Did you miss the boat? We're going to talk about that on today's episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning. And by the end of the episode, you'll know what's changed with I-bonds, what's actually improved, even though the overall rate's gone down, and why it still could be a smart place for you to invest some of your money. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And John, before we start, let's ask everybody to subscribe. It helps other people find us on YouTube. So John, yeah. I'm really excited about this episode that you brought it up. I know our viewers are interested in our opinions about I-bonds. And I, it's fascinating to find out that something significant has changed. So let's talk about what's changed and what the rates are. I think that's what viewers want to know. Yeah, yeah. Let's kind of start with that. So, you know, the last six months, we're getting something over nine and a half percent on these I bonds, right? Awesome rate. And the inflation component is sort of ticked down. And we sort of were expecting this, right? It's going to be a little lower than it was. Came out right about six and a half percent here as of November 1st, right? So a lot of the conversations we had were in October before the rate changes. Does it make sense to, uh, you know, to get in at that, you know, nine and a half plus percent rate? And I think I read, I read that the, uh, the last day you could really buy those bonds was October 28th. And if I remember it right, there were more I bonds bought that day, like in the last, than in the last two years combined or something crazy, like money piling into that, you know, to that deal. So people got in there. And so, and so now the rate changed November 1st, but what happened with it? Yeah. The, the inflation component of it is about six and a half percent as expected. What was sort of unexpected is that in I bonds, we've got that inflation component. There's also a base or a fixed component. The last several years, it's been zero on that fixed component, but in November, they came out and said, listen, there's a base rate in addition to the inflation rate of six and a half, there's a base rate of 0.4%. Uh, so if you were to buy your I-bond today, you're getting 6.9% basically, the six and a half percent inflation plus 0.4 for the base rate. And what's important about that is that fixed rate stays in place. And that bond you buy today, that stays in place for as long as you own that bond. For the next 30 years, you get that base rate plus the inflation component. So that's one of the things that sort of, uh, you know, we can kind of anticipate what we think inflation is going to look like. We can't anticipate that uh, that fixed rate. And so that's one of the things that's changed, but yet also sort of improved about I-bonds. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it's important for people to understand, again, that the fixed rate you get it for the entire time you have the I-bond. So that's in addition to the rate. So let's talk about what's happened in the past. So in a, in the last couple of years, like three years-ish, the fixed rate has been zero. Right. But before that, it was not zero. So yeah. uh, we had so a couple of years. We had a couple of years in there where it was like uh, like a half a percent and a little bit lower than that, but just for a short period of time. But then you go back to basically 2008, 2009 to the credit crisis, where after that, it was zero for a long time. Then we had a couple of years with a little bit of base rate and then another few years with zero. And now we're starting to see some base rate in there. So it's a fluctuating thing. But it was interesting. We were talking before we hit record here that people that bought at that time, maybe three or four years ago with a base rate of, of half a percent, they were getting the nine and a half percent of uh, inflation component plus that base rate. They were getting double digits on this fixed, you know, backed by the government guaranteed, you know, fixed return. So, you know, it can turn into a pretty good deal long term as well right. as the short term, right? Exactly. So that's why even if you uh, or want, if you missed out or you couldn't invest your whole $10,000, say, before uh, for the year before uh, that October 28th or the end of October, the date. And we had a whole video on this fact right. uh, and that you needed to get it in before the last possible date, because that was the date that the... U.S. Treasury said that they would uh, honor, you know, that yeah. that would yeah. be marked for November uh, as of, a, you know, at the old rate. But um, if you weren't able to get that for, what you know, many good reasons, uh, this it's it's not the 
new rate isn't quite as flashy, but the, it's still, it's got, there's another part of it that's got a little bit more appeal. Right, right. And you, and you think about, so from an overall standpoint, one of the questions that somebody might have is, geez, did I miss the boat? Right. You know, did I, did I miss the boat? Cause I didn't get in on that, you know, 9.6% ret return. And uh, the answer to the short answer is no. And just what you said, Bridget is, well, listen, now, if you buy your bond today, you get that base rate that stays around forever. Right. It can be a good deal. I've heard some people say on the other side, like, geez, did I make a mistake buying in October versus waiting? Now I'd have gotten that nice base rate. Right. And, and the math on it comes out to be something like over, you know, seven or eight years after seven or eight years, getting that 0.4% every year with that out, you know, would be a better deal. So it could turn out to be a better deal to buy them here in November. But I don't think that that's a thing to look back and you say, geez, I made a mistake. It's with short term guaranteed money in, for the next, you know, like buying a CD, if we think of it like that for five or six years and getting a better return on the thing. It's when, when you have money and you're in a position to invest, it's sort of like investing in stocks. The best time to do it is typically right now. So I don't think on either side, it's not like people made a mistake if they bought in October. I, I bought early. I didn't, I don't feel like that. If you didn't get it, you didn't miss the boat. You still have an opportunity. I think that that sort of discussion is really a non-starter and, and not worth considering. I don't, I'm not sure if you feel the same way or what your thought is on that. Well, I agree with you. And I just want to make it clear that if you did buy in October, you will get the new, you'll get the old rate for, uh, October plus the next five months. Right. And then uh, in after that, then you'll get this rate. So you'll, you'll start right. getting the fixed rate. You just right. won't get it immediately. You won't get it right now. You'll just well, get, you'll get, you'll get the new variable rate, right? Not yeah. the fixed rate on that. Well, you get the fixed rate uh, when it clicks in. Well, but if you so, buy today, yeah. If you buy today, exactly. But right. even if you bought in October, you'd get the you'll get the new fixed rate when it clicks into the uh, the next rate. Well, no, it's only on those new on the new issues, right? So that's going to stay in effect for as long as. So we oh, bought it in October. We're going to get zero wow. forever, right? You're right. I'm, if I'm, we buy in November, we're going to get that point four forever. And if we buy next May, so that fixed rate that that is one. This is a great so you topic. Have to, it's about when you bought it. It's about when you bought it. So, yeah. you know, there's some people, these things came out back in the late 90s, 98, 99. Nobody really yeah. cared about them back yeah. then. But the base rate back then was like 3%. And there's a place you can go on Treasury Direct and see. So they today are getting that six and a half plus 3% today, right? And so it fix, it fix it, and, and this is the thing where people say, well, geez, did I make a mistake? And the answer is no. Listen, you're buying another one in, in January, if it makes sense, then you're getting that base rate. And we just don't know where those things are going to be. So I so that, that idea of making a mistake on one side versus the other, you go, listen, hindsight's always 2020 on these things, right? If so, you have money, if it fits in your portfolio, if it fits your goals, buying when you have the ability to do it makes sense. And, and nothing's changed in that recently here. Good. So it's yeah. kind of embarrassing not to have realized that before, but it's good that people can walk through this. So let me just make sure that I've got this right. Yeah, yeah. So if I bought in... Uh, October, I get the 9.6. And then yep. when I, the, I won't get the fixed rate. Your until fixed rate I zero. Buy the new yep. I bonds. That's right. If I buy new I bonds and there's a fixed rate, when I get the new, I buy, when I buy more, then I will get the fixed rate, but right. I if will only get the variable rate when my rate changes after five months. Right. That variable rate's going to adjust every six months when you right. bought it. You know, six months when you bought that variable rate changes, the fixed rate stays the same throughout the throughout the bond. That's exactly okay. right. And I love this discussion because let, think about, I mean, this this stuff we talk about these things, and of course you and I deal with this, and you go, Oh, yeah, this is really easy. This stuff isn't simple, right? It's it's these it's things where you it takes time to think about, and you've got to be intentional about what you're doing with this and dig in. And so I really appreciate these discussions because golly, it all sounds the same, right? In a lot of cases, you kind of go like, okay, and we we as professionals have to think about this. That's why for viewers, hopefully these these expl explanations are useful. You go, oh yeah, that's right. This is how these things work and give some clarity on what, you know, what decisions folks might have. 
So, you know, in circling back in this, we talk about what's different in the rates today. First of all, that variable rate has gone down and gone down a lot, right? From, you know, over 9% to just over 6%, six and a half or so. But think about this and people might feel bad. Golly, it's at six. 6% 6 guaranteed for the next six months, pretty darn good rate still, right? What's changed also though, is if you buy them today, now you get this base rate that plays into it, 0.4%. That stays as long as you own that. Right, you're getting less interest than if you bought it, you know, a month ago. But long term, it could end up being a decent deal. And then the question is, well, what do we do when it's the same advice as we had, uh, you know, over over the years? If you if it makes sense for you to have an I bond, if you're thinking about buying CDs, if you have a CD coming due, money you're not going to spend in the next year, buying an I bond, whether it's today in November, December of 22, whether it's in January because you've already bought yours still makes sense to do because, you know, based on your on your situation and, and to not really worry about, well, what are the interest rates going to do next time? That's not the right question. It's what makes sense for you as an individual. Right. And the one thing about I-bonds that I would say is different than CDs is that you do have to keep the money in for a year. Right, right. You cannot than, take it out, right? Yeah, and and, and that, you mentioned we've had previous episodes. Check out the channel. We've got a lot of details on like how the whole thing works, but that is the caveat. You cannot get to it within the first year. Absolutely critical. Great. Well, I think it seems like this is a great time to wrap up. John and I are both members of ACP or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. And to introduce myself again, I'm Bridget Sullivan Morrell, and I've got a family financial planning practice in Chicago. And I'm John Shearer. I've got a family financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And before we hang up, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, help people find this information on YouTube.